Hi everyone, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. The video I'm about to show you is a present for a friend. Um, I had some leftover paints. I've used them to create um, a ribbon pour. I've put silicon in, in part of it um, and it created a sky effect and a kind of meadow effect. I've then used some pebbles to uh, represent my friends. So there's a mum, a dad and there's three boys. Um, so I've um, stuck the pebbles on with some uh, a hot glue gun, um, drawn some arms and legs, and then used my Cricut machine to write their name on the bottom, which is Brownlee. Um, the reason I had this idea in the first place was because my friend likes to recycle things, doesn't want to throw things away, and she gave me a frame which she had lying around her house, and it's one of the box frames I love using for my artwork. So I'm reusing her frame, I'm using paint leftovers, and I'm using pebbles um, to create this gift. Um, so it's already filmed. I filmed it without talking, so I'm going to do a voiceover um, as you watch the video. So I said in the intro I was doing ribbon pours. That's not right. I'm actually doing flip cups and I will do a few ribbons on top. So the board you can see to the left, that's the base of the frame and that's what I was going to pour on. And I'm layering up here lots of little tiny paper cups. I'm layering up, I think it's three with the green paints and I'm adding some pink. My friend has three boys and I just wanted to add some pink, some girly colour um, into the grass. So some, it will represent some little green, uh, little pink flowers within the green grass. So now I'm layering up blues and silver. So this will re represent the sky. The blues are different shades. So the palest one almost looks white. So that will hopefully look like some clouds in the sky. So it's a flip cup, so I'm flipping it over. Now, big mistake here, I put my board on one large yogurt pot in the centre. Um, normally, I've got support on all four corners of a canvas, so I, have, I forgot and tipped it off over the edge. The paint consistency is very runny. It's mixed with PVA glue and water and it's runny. Um, so therefore, it came out a lot quicker than I was anticipating. So it messed up that first cup, but quite happy, got the other ones um, on, the canvas, on the board nicely. So I'm dragging them over. So I've now got a nice pool of paint down that, that one side. You can see some cells forming in the bottom because I added some silicon in the greens and the pink. So I'm just uh, tipping the board now just to get that edge covered. Now there's a lot of paint there and because it's nice and runny, I know, although I tipped some of the paint off, spilt it off, I know I've got plenty of paint to get this covered. The edge that I'm just adding some more paint onto now, that's always the most difficult edge I find to, to get covered, top and bottom. So I've just had some, left some spare paint, so I'm just wetting the board because that will help the rest of the paint to flow really nicely. So now I'm tilting it just to get the board covered. I'm going from side to side a little bit to try and get that bottom corner covered with the green. And then back up to the top to try and get that extra bit of blue that I added on covered, or to get that tipped off over the edge as well. I'm just trying to straighten up my horizon here. It doesn't need to be perfectly straight because it's it's grass, it's green, so it could be a bit uneven, but I want it more or less straight. Plenty of paint so I can really tip the paint up and down and it distorts the edge, but that's fine because I can then tip the paint off um, over the edge. So happy with that. I'm now just adding a little bit of extra green where the pink is. I didn't like that big, dark pink band. I thought it was too big. So I'm just adding a little bit of green left from the cups. There's always a little bit of paint left in the bottom of the paper cups. So I'm just using that to do a little ribbon pour over the top. So it just creates a little bit more contrast in the green area, the grassy area as well.
not happy with that little spot so I'm just dragging my finger through I'm going to torch this though so actually if there are any little spots of paint that I'm not happy with they won't really show because it's going, I'm going to torch it it will just become a crowd of, of cells um, but I still had enough paint that I could tip that off um, which is what I decided to do So I've now got my heat gun, my blowtorch, and I'm now torching. And I'm trying to torch in lines so that the lines match the lines of the paint. So you can see some cells popping up, some green cells within the green. There's some pink cells at the top there within the green. And I'm particularly trying to torch the very the horizon, the, um, the transition between the green and the blue, because it creates little green cells going into the blue. And I just think that looks like some, maybe some flowers or some plants growing along the horizon. So this is the wet close up. So loads of beautiful, beautiful cells, all different shapes and sizes, um, not particularly round. And that's because the paint's quite runny. If I wanted rounder cells, I should have kept it thicker, but I didn't. Um, now they're the little cells that go into the blue, which I just think look beautiful, like some sort of plant growing up on the on the horizon. And the sky, love the sky, just love how choppy it is, how very it is, varied it is. There's lots of little cells, um, lots of little shapes and patterns and designs within the paint. So it's now dry and I've got my pebbles. So I've already decided which pebbles are for the bodies and which pebbles are for the head. So I've put them roughly in position and I've put the mount around the edge so I can see what space I've got to work with. And I'm just using a black Posca pen to draw on the legs and the feet, just thickening them up here. And then next I'm going to draw on the, the arms and the hands. And the way I'm doing it is that they're all holding, it looks like they're all holding hands. And I spilt a little bit there and then I had a panic, but I used the baby wipe and it came off nicely. And the same there. I'm just, it's, it's, you use Posca pen is permanent, but if you, if you do clean it quite quickly, you can, you can lift it off and then redraw it. I'm now using a hot glue gun, quite a lot of glue on the back just to really hold that sto those stones in position well. Now this is my Cricut machine, it's called a Cricut Joy and it's the small version of a Cricut machine. I've programmed into my phone my friend's surnames, my surname sorry, and now it's cutting it out. So it's a vinyl sticker that is being cut out of their surname which you can now see. So I've let, it's on the, um, the backing. I'm about to use some transfer paper. I'm putting that over the top, pressing it down so that the sticker will stick to the transfer paper. I just need to give it a little bit of help just to get it off the, the backing onto the transfer paper. And then position it onto my picture. This took me ages to get this into the right position. I'm just measuring it to check that it's level and that it's in the center. It took me absolutely ages to get this right. And then once it's, uh, once it's in the right position, I'm pulling up that transfer paper again and it then is stuck to the, um, the surface, the painting. The tea came off. So I'm now just adding the tea back on, checking that it's in line. So I'm happy with that. Now I'm getting my frame. As I said, it's a box frame. Um, so this is wrong. I put the painting in first, realized I didn't need to put the painting in first. I need to put the mount and the spacer in first and then put the painting in and then clip it back down. And there it is finished. So let me show you up close. Just really, really happy with it. I like the variety, the variation within the sky. Really happy with the size of the pebbles, the shape of the pebbles, um, and then the grass and the flowers. 
I used black for the name because I thought that would be a really good um, colour to tie in with the frame. And I just think the pink works so well with the green and with the blue. So really, really happy with how this turned out.